What's up YouTube? Um, this is Jonathan Kane. Today I was thought I'd show you guys my 3D printer that I have and give you a slight review of it. So my print this is my printer. It's called an ANET A8. The ANET A8 is a very cheap Chinese 3D printer. It one at the time I bought it, it was on sale for 130 US dollars and after shipping it was 190. Uh, last time I checked it was about 175, so really um, cheap 3D printer and I will say um, if you can put together an IKEA kit you probably can put this together so if you don't know if think you can do it then you can do it it's pretty easy because you look right here on the corners there's a little slot in the bottom that a M3 nut goes into which is right here where my finger is and then you just simply slot an M3 um, screw into it and that's how the pieces go together and it's made out of acrylic now the design is based off of the popular Prusa i3 which if you have the extra money I would highly recommend getting that kit because it's just awesome but that's kind of irrelevant so out of the box and get it, I want you to get it up and running I would say it prints okay it's not exactly the best setup, but um, if you print some upgrades for it, you can get it up to really high quality. So, normally down here, your fan nozzle would be some looks like this, having right there. Um, don't use that. Just print this ring fan nozzle. It's on Thingiverse. It's really amazing, and it'll make your parts cool more evenly. So. That'll take care of that. Um, to keep it in place, I took an eighth inch drill bit and drilled through the um, fan right here and then did that. Put a little um, wood screw in there. And so that's the first mod I did to this thing. The second mod was, was actually this here uh, lifter. So it's a little bit of a pain normally like back here it'd be a little, uh, that's where the z-axis limit switch would be but it's kind of a pain to adjust especially when you want to just barely adjust it like when you have a difference between like half a millimeter or even less than that it's almost impossible to do so that's why I use this setup because I can just turn that with turn this little bolt right there with the screwdriver and it works much better and I can get a much better way to deal with it my next mod that I did was I replaced this here heated bed. I put a piece of borosilicate glass. This is just a 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter borosilicate glass sheet. This is really helpful because you do sacrifice your um, a little bit of build volume. You could just get a larger piece to deal with that. But the problem is is that underneath this piece of underneath this little piece of aluminum is a heated bed. Is the heat he, PCB heater, and so what'll happen is typically the center heats up fa faster than the outer edge. So what'll happen is when stuff heats up, it expands and contracts. So you end up getting a slight amount of bowing in the center. And if I remove this one, you can see this is just a very minute amount of bowing going on. So the glass does bend a teeny bit because that's glass isn't exactly the thing, but one, it guarantees that you have a flat build surface, and then what I do is I just take a little bit of glue stick. I don't even know if it's necessary. I just find that it guarantees a stick, and I almost, once I get the bed leveled and um, it's the nozzle height's just right, um, you get, pretty much I've never had really much of an issue with the uh, printer having a sticking issue with the bed. So that solves that problem. So the next um, thing I did is I printed this here, um, back here, this little uh, spool holder. Normally it comes with this little thing, but I decided to do this. Uh, I cannot, I got this design from a guy named Neil Rosenberg. He's um, the, the head coach of my robotics team and the UNCA um, mechatronics program. Um, and he designed it see his little XD for X Drive logo. So yeah, that designs his. 
Um, and then I printed off these little holders. They're not really that necessary, but it's just a good way of keeping your stuff set up. Also, if you look closely, I've also printed a little uh, bracket holder or whatever this is. It keeps those little tactile buttons from moving around because normally these things are just like be all over the place and it's hard. It's a pain to deal with. So that's another thing you can do. You can also use some of the extra holders to make it stiffer. I found that that holds it in place better. What was the last thing? Oh yeah. The, and then the final thing, and I just did this the other day, like yesterday, and this is the most effective as far as quality goes, is these little um, belt tensioners. There's one there, and it simply goes up against these the two um, x-axis some um, guide rods and puts pressure there and then just simply slides onto there and then I put one here and it, this one simply uses these little screws here and it tightens it up and you hear that that's the pitch I, I found that works Um, by doing that, I pretty much got rid of the ringing issue, which is the only um, thing I saw that was the problem with my parts, is that they were ringing ever so slightly. So if you look very closely, you can see the ringing going on on the parts. Unfortunately, I didn't do any of these mods until I printed them. And after that, I decided to print off a test print. And this is the quality that I got. This is... It. I'll, I'll put some pictures at the end of the, in in here, but that's really amazing. It's om the ringing is still there, it's, but it's almost not noticeable at all. It was completely um, it went from that to to this. I don't know if you can see it there. You see those little um, vertical lines? That's what I'm referring to. It's almost non-existent on this. I mean, I think that the only thing I could left to do that would make this any better is putting a um, anti-Z axis backlash on these lead screws here. But I don't even think it's necessary at this point because that's about as good as it's going to get. And I'm rather impressed. For Slicer, I um, actually purchased a copy of a program called Simplify 3D. If you have the $150 to spend on this, get it. It's, it's amazing. So, I have an uh, extra monitor and an old, my old laptop running Linux because it's faster because it doesn't take 10 minutes to run. And then, I have the print manual on here, or the print controller here, and a and that here. I also have a program called NitroShare set up on here so that I can just send files quickly between these computers. And it works really well. Hmm. All I do, I have just a folder set up on here. I just send it to, and that setup works really well. And I think that's about it as far as the design. Oh, and one last thing. I also this is just a setup you can do for holding your tools. I just took a piece of uh, material. Well, this is just trimming. Put some nails in it to hold these. And I also just took an old some hard drive magnets and stuck everything to it. So I've got my all my tools up against it. See, I've got magnets and whatnot that just hold everything in place. And basically that holds everything and it works really well.